Carp Talk. Proudly sponsoring Extreme Carp. Welcome to one of the last bastions of English carp heritage, a place where dreams have been made and will be in the future. Now today we've got exclusive access to a big name who's a big man with big opinions and he's bound to of course a few. Indeed I have, Rob, and uh, many of you probably suspecting I'll be holding a bit of a lump uh, and maybe a little bit surprised to see me holding a mid-double mirror. But what an absolute stunner. Uh, I learned a long time ago I can get as much fun out of fishing for fish of this size as any other. And what an absolute cracker. Just look at that. Well, Chili, you've dragged me, I was going to say halfway across the country, but it's three quarters of the way down country to this place. Why on earth are we here? because it's a very, very special place. Uh, special on three accounts. One, uh, it was mentioned in the Doomsday Book. Two, it's one of the oldest man-made lakes in the country. And three, it was stocked in the early 60s by Donald Leaney. So we've got a lot of history here, and it's the fish that particularly tickle my fancy. The old leanies are stunning anyway. You know, what's the score on them? How long ago? How old are they? 1961 they went in here, so they're 51 years old, best part of. Uh, and they're all stunning little scaly fish, and, and they are still quite little. I think the biggest one's about 25. Uh, they... How many's left? Sorry to interrupt you there, but how many's left? 15... 12 to 15 probably they're not quite sure because obviously being 51 years old yeah um they're dying uh but they've left a marvelous legacy um we've got <coughs> fish that were actually born in red pool in here i'm not quite sure how many of those it's either. a double whammy that isn't it, it? not only leanies but red mire as well <laughs> and they're incredible looking fish uh, they, they they really are lovely scaly beasts uh there's 20 mark simmons carp in here and they're also about 100 fish from a rescue operation from a lake further on down the road so you've got a little bit of a mishmash uh, of all sorts and some very special carp uh and some carp that will that help the fishery into the future well, patching was looking lively, and who better to guide us through the session than the current world champ? I'm going to reposition the rod I just had a fish from. Uh, and the first thing I want to do, I'm not using a marker flat or anything, is to ensure that I'm going to land bang on where I want it to. I've cast the lead out and I've felt the lead down onto the bottom. It's very silty in here, and the area I want to fish is firm, and I know that lead is right on it. To get it accurately back on the spot when I attach the rig, I need to put it into the line clip on the reel. And all I'm going to do then is reel that in, and just by way of confirmation, make sure I can get it back there accurately, I'll have one more cast. Okay, I need to kneel down to do this because of the trees. And out she goes. It's not that far out and now uh, I can use the rings of where that lead just landed to introduce my free offerings. First of all, because the rig is going to be attached to a PVA bag, I'm going to fire out four PVA bags exactly the same as the ones that connected to the hook. Okay, the next thing I want to do, I just want to put a little light scatter and a boil is out there. And for that, I'm going to use 10 mil and 14 mil new grange. There's some white on those baits. All that is, is the sugar being forced to the surface by the enzymes breaking down. And the next thing to do is get them in the pond. I'm not too interested in them all being in a nice tight group. 
Okay, that's all the three offerings in. The next thing I need to do ooh, is reel this lead in. Get my hook link with the PVA bag attached. Push the anti-tangle sleeve up over and then get it accurately back onto the spot. And that is bang on the money. Sometimes in carp fishing you can prep like a world champion, yet you never quite know what's going to happen next. Huh. I was just thinking about my lack of action and no sooner have the thoughts entered my mind than uh, my little rod out in the open water has ripped off and uh, I'm so pleased with this rod because everybody wants to fish tight to pads and snags when they see them. And really, you don't have to. This is where bait... Uh, no, 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 no. Ay, ay, ay. This is where bait plays its role in carp fishing. Excuse me a minute. This is all... Uh, you know, if you bait away from them, from the snags and potential hazards, invariably the carp come and find you. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> this is desperately trying to get into these snaggy margins and uh, I'm probably being a little more heavy handed than I want to be, but it's in the open now, so we're okay. That's another nice looking fish, it really is. I think all those attempts in the margins have uh, wore it out quite quick and it's... Uh, that is in the net. Well... <laughs> oh. oh dear. Again. <laughs> oh, it's not a monster and I've got another rod going. Well, thankfully, the other fish... Oh, it's right over there, dear. You have to back right off, mate. I'm coming right behind you. Get over there. Unfortunately, this has gone right round a set of pads and I'm going to have to give it all the grief I didn't want to. I think we've got it round. Yeah, it's in the open water now. Whew. That was all a bit urgent. Hi, yeah, yeah. Now you can see the leads come off the clip. And uh, it is the one thing when you're fishing. This isn't a snaggy area as such, but uh, if they do get caught up in the lilies, you need that lead to come off because it's the one thing that will get snagged. And. Uh, what that means is you can successfully land your carp. <laughs> and I've just got to say it, light my fire. <laughs> ah, and that is everything that's good about carp fishing. And uh, if that ever changed, you can buy these rods. <laughs> <sighs> I think I've answered that age-old question. Does size really matter? Well, after that little taster and seeing what Chili's fish are like, I'm desperate to get myself a slice of carp fishing history. So. I've come up at this end of the pond, the wind's blowing up here, it's looking quite nice. 
and I'm just going to have a little flick around with the lead over towards that far side. I don't want to be putting a marker float out. It doesn't really seem to be that sort of a pond. So just casting over there and feeling what it's like. And that, to be fair, feels quite nice. It's very silty all over the place, quite soft, but there are the odd firm patches here and there. So let's bring that one back in, have another flick over there, feel what it feels like. And if after two casts I'm quite happy with that, then I'll clip up and then stick some bait out. Stopping the lead, just feeling it down. Certainly not feeling a donk, the water's quite shallow. I would say two and a half, three foot deep, and that's come out of that silt very easily there. So I'm gonna pop that one in the clip. Remember that one for later. And stick a bit of food on the heads. Well, here I am directly opposite my swim, and this bank is a no fishing bank, so it just screams marginal patrol route. Just looking up there, there's no wind on the water behind me, and I think the fish might follow the wind up towards this end of the pond and sit in the sunnier areas. So, that's my plan of attack. I'm using boily just like chili, but rather than two different sizes, I'm going to use some whole and some crushed. And I'm going for two different options on this. One, a reasonable way out, a nice, fairly wide spread. And the other one will be a little bit tighter, just further down to my right. So, a nice little spread over there, here, there and everywhere, just to get those fish on the munch. Carp Talk, proudly sponsoring Extreme Carp. Carp Talk, proudly sponsoring Extreme Carp. Welcome back to the Extreme Carp Show and we've exclusive access into Patching Pond in Sussex and the newly crowned world champion. Chili, how does it feel? World champion, uh, I think, I know somebody who's had it twice. But just for once in your life, to be the world champion of something you love and you've given your soul to, I don't think there's anything better. And to share it with Lee Jackson was just the icing on the cake. And here's the biggest one of my nine fish haul last night. One of Patchin's 20 pounders. And I can't help feeling the future is very bright for this place. Right, well, I've moved. I've just come down to the right-hand side of Chile. He did have a spare rod out pointing down this way, casting in this area, and he's caught a couple of fish on it. He's very kindly moved that out now, so I'm going to take advantage and see if I can pick one up. I've got a couple out in open water. I've got one down to the pads on the right-hand side. The fish, they've certainly been in this area, and fingers crossed, it might be history time. OK, let's talk rigs. I'm not one for changing them, I don't mess about with them, i find something that works for me and it works in all the environments that I'm fishing. Whether I'm fishing for smaller fish as I am today or bigger lumps in the UK or on the continent. My main line, 12 pound Illusion fluorocarbon, hard as nails, sinks like a brick. Down to a size 10 lead clip. Size 10 because it's small and unobtrusive and make sure when you use a lead clip you put the pin through the swivel and nail it to the swivel, stops you having a running lead set up then and the lead can eject. 
a flat pair, lies flush to the bottom, and a size 10, and make sure it is a size 10 when you use this size of clip, swivel. Quick chain swivel in this case, which facilitates the changing of hook links, which is six or seven inches of strippable braid, anti-tangle sleeve at one end and a loop down to a size seven SSC hook with a little bit of shrink tubing just to make a more aggressive angle on the hook. A long hair on which is a dumbbell new grange hook bait with a little bit of plastic corn on top. Never bothered by the colour, it's there to negate the weight of the hook. The long hair can tangle. I've trapped it with the boily stop into the mesh and that is never tangling. All that's left to do is hook that onto the quick chain swivel. If my eyes will let me. Push the anti-tangle sleeve up and we are ready to rock and roll. Chilly, it's been quite an interesting exercise for me watching you baiting up. Yep. Now, we've had this conversation before, you like meat, you don't particularly like vegetables, <laughs> uh, and you call your boilies your meat. You've been down, what, 50 odd hours? That's yep. the, the plan for the session. How much bait have you been through? Uh, 20 kilos. <laughs> 20 kilos. Now, that's a lot, there's going to be viewers out there thinking, my God, that's a lot of, an awful lot of bait to put in. That's going to be very expensive. Is it all boily? No, it isn't boily. Uh, a lot of that is pellets, uh, which, is, which is your background feed. I'm very fortunate uh, I, I can get pellets that correspond to the flavours of my boilies, which is a great way of getting that smell into the water. Uh, pellets, smaller ones especially, get the carp rooting around and, and that keeps them in the, in the swim a lot longer. They can eat a lot of boilies very quickly because they're yeah. very available. Uh, pellets keep them rooting around and the longer they're in your swim rooting around, the more likely you are to catch one. You'll notice I've gone five or six yards past the pads and slightly to the left. I'm encouraging the carp to come out and feed on my bait there. I haven't locked the reel up solid because I don't want the carp to kite back into the pads. I want it to run away into the open water where I can play it and tire it out. If it does come back into those pads then, my quick release lead clip will get rid of the lead and I'm able to draw it easily through and guide it into the landing net. Ah, uh, the fish are just so on the bait now, they're just in this area and uh, as long as I can keep it nice and accurate, uh, we'll keep catching them. It's only a smaller fish but <coughs> it's, I've had a bit of a busy night and uh, I just think any fish if it doesn't put a smile on your face, you might as well give up carp fishing. And uh, again, this isn't the biggest fish I'll ever catch, but come on, baby. Just want to avoid the other line. Oh, bless it! Look at that. <laughs> There's the beauty of the leg clip. I mean, the lead is still on even though it got in the pads, but had it got into any difficulty, it's going to come off. And uh, Look at that for a little fish. When a little carp like that can fight so hard, <laughs> he ain't given up yet either, has he? Look at that. <laughs> I just think if it didn't, I might as well... Uh, Selling my gear. And in it goes. That is an incredible little fish. <laughs> oh dear. Well, I was hanging on for a carp whilst Chili was still bagging, but I had a funny feeling my luck was about to change. Well, the sun is out, the sky is blue, it's beautiful, because I'm playing a carp. The move has paid off. Up there, it looked good, but there was nothing showing. Down here, there was nothing showing, but it was looking very good, and it's looking even better at the moment. I've just had a belter on the open water. 
and safely through the little pads now for the landing net and whilst it might not be the biggest fish in the world as Chile said all the way through the series carp fishing is about enjoyment and I must say I am properly enjoying this let's just get down don't fall off baby I really want you in where is he and he is in the back of the net thank you very much it's always nice to go to a water you've never seen before and catch a carp I've caught one and it's particularly nice when there's a bit of history behind it yes Well, he certainly isn't the biggest carp in the world, but it really, really doesn't matter. Whatever your aspirations are in carp fishing, whether it's a big one or lots of little ones, or just simply having fun with your mates, the key word is, of course, fun. And the main thing is to enjoy yourself. Look at you. Well, that's it from me, and we've had a fantastic couple of days here on Patching Pond in Sussex. It was great to catch right at the death, but we'll leave the lake with a few words of inspiration from our newly crowned world champ, Mr Ian Chilcott. When did the penny drop? Uh, during my hugely limited amount of time when I was serving in the British Army, I met a couple of guys in 1994 on a lake that I was fishing who introduced me to what seemed to be perceived as the exotic world of big carp fishing. And for a few years I did. Uh, I chased a big carp uh, and um, I came to a point where my personal life changed, my personal circumstances and I had to start fishing for smaller carp again and I didn't think I'd enjoy it and I can tell you now, whatever size of the carp, they'll put a smile on your face and when my circumstances changed, I think that was one of the most pivotal moments in my life because I could get enjoyment from catching any size of carp. something quite special on the end of here and that's a maggot clip. Now she's a great way of presenting maggots on the end of the rather than on the actual hook itself. Now as you'll see this is an arrow shape which is unlike conventional ones which are round. The maggots can't bunch up on the front of it. There's only two sides to it so you'll see in a second when I show you the finished rig there's no bunching up at all. There you go. Absolutely perfect and then you'll see the advantage as well with the silicon so it doesn't matter there's no way those maggots can get round and mask that hook point. Such so a really clear presentation. Now, bait-wise, for the introduction of bait, what I'll do is I'll tie up four or five bags like so, clip them up, cast them out, bait the area like that accurately by fishing the line in the reel clip. Then all I've got to do with the last one is attach it into the tag end, like so. I won't hook into the bag because you always run the risk of actually bursting a maggot and then your bag's going to come off on the cast. But you can see, great little presentation. What fish can resist that? Carp Talk, proudly sponsoring Extreme Carp.